Uh, we're all gathered today in this tent uh, to hear from one of the most controversial authors of the last few decades. The list of literary subjects she has enlightened, offended, embarrassed, and even endangered ranges quite far from uh, presidents and first ladies to connected crooners and even the great and powerful Oprah, praise be her name. Kitty, Kitty, Kitty Kelly Kelly personal facts include growing up in the beautiful Northwest uh, and somehow finding her way to New York City, uh, which I, I suppose she found too boring and simple. She made her way very quickly to DC after that and worked in Senator Eugene McCarthy's office uh, on, the, on the press side, right on the Hill. And it must have been your catalyst for your love of investigative reporting. Uh, she was a researcher then at the Washington Post and began her lifelong career of prolific freelance writing. This long career in news and commentary has been accented with best-selling investigative books and the uproar that came with them, such as Jackie O, Elizabeth Taylor, The Last Star, Nancy Reagan, Unauthorized Biography, The Royals, uh, The Family, The Real Story of the Bush Dynasty, Oprah Biography, and of course my favorite, His Way, The Unauth Unauth Unauthorized Biography of Frank Sinatra. It's a really great book. And in a change of direction, Miss Kelly's most recent book, uh, Capturing Camelot, Stanley uh, Traitik's iconic images of the Kennedys. Really great book uh, and very well photographed, obviously, and very well put together. Uh, personally, uh, these picture books mean a lot more to me when they're, the captions are well researched and thought out and a bit more prose than you would normally find, which is what uh, Miss Kelly did with this book. Uh, so never failing to raise a few eyebrows while uncovering the stories behind our shared history, and doing such a wonderfully painful job of reminding us that our heroes are very, very human. Please welcome to the festival, Kitty Kelly. <clears throat> the only part of that introduction that isn't quite right is the prolific. <laughs> Takes me four years, I usually. Heard from someone. I don't know Did you? Well, no, you gotta be careful, guys. <laughs> <laughs> prolific. As a turtle, it takes me four years usually on each book. Um, but this one, this book was a labor of love because Stanley Treddick was one of my very best friends and um, he was one of President Kennedy's favorite photographers. And I used to go visit Stanley in Washington and one time I asked him, what he had in the Marine Corps locker that he used as his coffee table. And then I said, Stanley, what do you have in there? And he looked at me and he said, nude pictures. I dropped the subject. Years later when Stanley died, he left me his archive and they delivered the Marine Corps locker to my house. And my husband said, what's in there? And I said, um, nude photos. He said, well, come on, let's open it. And I said, no, I really, I don't want to remember Stanley that way. He said, we got to open this. He said, Stanley was a great photographer. I got to see those. And we argued about it for a while. And when we opened it, it wasn't nude photographs at all. It was the most sentimental store of Kennedy photographs and artifacts and letters and handwritten notes from the president and the first lady. Anyway, I'm going to show you some of them and tell you about them. But because this was the 50th anniversary of the Kennedy administration and because Stanley had left me these photographs, I, I really wanted to share them. I didn't want to just donate them you know, to a library where they'd sit in dust and people would never see them. So, this photograph, which is on the cover of the book, came with an exclusive four days that Stanley spent with President Kennedy and his son. And he did it to do a cover story for Look Magazine. This is Stanley. I want you to, not Robert Redford, not Dustin Hoffman, but the guy in the middle with the camera. Stanley, Stanley's passion in life was covering politics and he was very, very close to the Kennedys, but he also did a lot of special stills for movies like All the President's Men and um, Urban Cowboy and uh, 
a lot of Robert Redford movies, a lot of Warren Beatty movies, and Dustin Hoffman movies. So I just wanted you to see what Stanley looked like in his prime. Stanley was a marine photographer in Korea, and he took this picture, which Military Times says is one of the ten, uh, one of the hundred best photographs showing military combat. I found it so moving that I included it in the book just to tell you a little bit about Stanley. This, this on the face of it is is a guest towel, one of those linen things your great aunt Nellie might have had in her guest bathroom, ironed, and it's embroidered with JFK. When I went through the Marine Corps trunk, I found this. Now, I thought I knew everything about Stanley. We were friends for years and years and years. But he never mentioned anything about this towel, and I could find no record of it in the trunk. And I did wonder if maybe, maybe, when he went to Hyannis Port, one of those times he might have pinched it. <laughs> I don't know, but, and it could be that, that Mrs. Kennedy gave it to him. I <laughs> doubt it, but the reason I've included this picture of the towel is that, to me, this became rosebud for Stanley Tredick. You remember Citizen Kane and the sled? Well, when I knew Stanley was years after he covered the Kennedys, and when I met him, oh, he was driving a silver BMW and wearing a Cartier watch and cashmere sweaters, and, and he was driving me in Washington one time through a real bad area, and he slowed down. And I said, why are you slowing down here? He said, well, you see? that window up there, and he pointed to a rat-infested building, uninhabited, and there was a towel in a broken, dirty window. And he said to me, that towel says it all. He said, that's where I came from. And I thought, when I was doing the research for that book, he really did come from grinding poverty. But because of hard work and immense talent, he did very, very well, was very, very prosperous. So I, I put the towel in there because I do think that's a key to Stanley. Oh, and th these were in the trunk as well. The PT boat pin that JFK gave to people. And this plexiglass box that the president gave to all those people who traveled with him on the Caroline, which was the private plane that his father bought him for the presidential campaign. Um, Stanley kept all those things, and they were wrapped up in the trunk. And you'll see pictures of them in the book. Okay, this starts the photographs in the book. This picture was taken at Valley Forge when President Kennedy is campaigning, excuse me, Senator Kennedy is campaigning. And you could barely, he's right there. The thing that is so extraordinary for us to be looking at this in the year 2013, no security, people are, the press is up two feet from the candidate, and these are the crowds that turned out. Um, you can see, it just says something about a time and a place that we don't get anymore. And no teleprompters either. <laughs> this is what Stanley called the hand shot. This was his favorite photograph of President Kennedy. He's on top of a convertible, and standing behind him is Governor Pat Brown of California, and it's during the, uh, the uh, um, fall election. 
And I said to Stanley, why is that particular?